diabolical monoliths of wood and twisted steel, the designs of roller coasters can only spring from equally twisted minds. Me as a designer, what I like to see is I like to see the whole gamut of emotions on a coaster. I love to see somebody that's scared to death. And I also like to see the people with their hands up in the air just screaming, enjoying the whole thing. Uh, scaring them to death and giving them a, a great ride in terms of uh, speed and air. You have to have a love for amusement parks and roller coasters if you want to if you want to be a roller coaster designer. Designers live to scare you, and for over a hundred years, they've been building bigger, faster, meaner roller coasters. Today's roller coasters are limited only by the budget parks have to spend. The technology is here today to build a coaster of any size, any speed, any height. As far as I'm concerned, they could fly me to the moon and drop me back to Earth. And California is the place where some of the biggest, fastest, meanest roller coasters first rocked the world. I think California is the mecca for coasters because Californians love thrills. From the surfers at the beach to the snowboarders up in the mountains to the, the people climbing thousands of feet up straight granite cliffs at Yosemite. And coaster designers know that if a ride can thrill fans here, it can wreak total havoc anywhere else on the planet. Sometimes there's a fine line between terror and a great time. Goliath at Six Flags Magic Mountain, just outside Los Angeles, doesn't just blur the line, it erases it. It has the, the helix from hell. Maybe your parents told you monsters don't exist. It pulls between four, perhaps four and a quarter Gs. They were wrong. It's a major league throw machine. Opened in 2000, Goliath was the biggest and fastest coaster in the world, and it still tops the heap as one of the most monstrous rides around. What's good about Goliath is that it's very fast and very fun. This is Daniel Lavelle, 14 years old, with one dream. My ultimate dream is to build one of these rides. I want it to be the biggest, the tallest, and the fastest, but also the funnest. Perhaps someday Daniel will build a coaster as brutal as Goliath. But today, he's just got to survive it. We're here at Six Flags Magic Mountain riding Goliath. This ride is 255 feet tall and will drop us at 85 miles per hour. And it will be extreme. I'm getting butterflies in the stomach right now. I'm not too sure about this drop. Now we're right at the top of the lift, going way up here. Put your hands up in there. <laughs> oh man, this is one heck of a drop. into a bunny hill that will give us three seconds of air time. Yeah. Oh yeah. Awesome. Awesome feeling. Oh. Up to the brake run. Now we'll be diving down into a helix that will pull four Gs. Oh. And here we go. All these head knockers. Give the effect of getting your head chopped off. Very heavy. Ah! Oh, very intense. Now we're diving back down again. And back up into the station. Oh. Awesome ride. Goliath is considered a hyper coaster. What makes it a hyper coaster? Roller coaster designers take some of the most loved coaster design elements and make them bigger, meaner, and crazier than ever before. And Goliath will give you a lesson on what it means to take on a man eating giant. Watch and learn. The psychological games begin right when you hit the lift. A good roller coaster ride is a little bit like a good motion picture where the beginning of the ride, you set the scene. And you set the scene by taking people up the lift hill rather slowly so they can have whatever second thoughts about what put them on this ride in the first place. The result? Your heartbeat and breathing have a chance to quicken. 
The ride seems higher. The impending drop, steeper. This is roller coaster foreplay, and Goliath's designers are the Don Juans of the craft. Of course, once you reach the moment of truth, there's no turning back. Preservation instinct takes over when you're going down the first drop, because you're heading down into a tunnel that looks like about the size of a Dixie cup. When you're standing perched, looking over the edge, you just know you're not going to, that train is not going to fit in that little tunnel at the bottom. The tunnel, a master's device. Ever head down into a parking garage and think the top of your car is going to hit the ceiling? Same idea here. When you race down towards this tiny black hole, your mind believes your body needs more room than it does to get through. This is the head chopper effect designers utilize to make you scream your head off. The screams of your fellow riders reverberate against the tunnel walls. You know, psychologically, it's just... It's mind-numbing. Great coaster design is all about diversity. Different ride experiences combine to give riders a total thrill. And the mountainous camelback on Goliath gives riders a mega dose of airtime. Airtime is negative Gs. What are Gs? Gravitational force. G-force. Gs. There are negative and positive Gs. Roller coaster designers can calculate the g-forces on the rider at any point along the ride. So they can provide moments of negative gravity when you are lifted up off your seat. You get your heaviest moments of positive gravity when you are pressed into your seat, usually at the bottom of the hill. And Goliath has got some mind-bending g's. For me, the most amazing part of Goliath is the 470-degree downward helix. You take it at extreme speed, and the G's pushing you down into the seat are amazing, unlike any other ride. There's no time to think, as this gargantuan brute takes control of your body and mind, whooshing you through a double helix with unheard of positive G's. So, with a multitude of advanced design elements, this hypercoaster has got it all. Had a great mix of airtime and great mix of laterals. You're pinned to your seat the whole time. You know, it was, uh, it was so fast you can hardly scream. This is my favorite roller coaster here at Six Flags Magic Mountain. It's uh, an amazing, amazing roller coaster. Goliath's one of the coaster greats, but right now, here at Six Flags Magic Mountain, a different kind of beast has been born. X is the wildest ride on the planet. Even the wildest roller coaster in the world still gives you a sense of security because you follow the track, you do what the track does. But with X, that last sense of security is gone, destroyed. You don't do what the track does anymore. It's truly one of a kind. The appearance of X is another example of the bizarre lengths coaster designers are going for our riding pleasure. And the introduction of X gives Six Flags Magic Mountain the world record for the most roller coasters at any one amusement park in the world, 15. Enter the fourth dimension. X is what Aero Development calls the only fourth dimension roller coaster in the world. Right now, most coasters just can move through three-dimensional space. You're fixed to the car, you're always facing forward or backwards, depending on what the car is, but it doesn't change during its path. So the fourth dimension to me really is uh, not time, it's spin. That's designer Alan Schilke, the maniacal mind behind the madness. He's got twisted steel on the brain for sure. My mom always said I had a death wish. Schilke's been designing coasters for nearly 15 years, but the idea for this twisting, spinning, looping creation came long before he ever even knew what a Pythagorean theorem was. Actually, the first time I ever thought about doing a ride like this was as a kid, about 12 years old, riding the zipper. It's my favorite ride at a fair. It does front flips and back flips. And way back then, I thought, hey, wouldn't it be great to, you know, put one of these on a roller coaster? So designer Alan Schilke developed a revolutionary four-track system that allows riders to take controlled spins forwards and backwards through incredible dives and intense loops. Coaster cars 20 feet wide flip riders through nearly half a mile of track and up to 76 miles an hour. X crushes the old way of thinking about a thrill ride, giving fans experiences and sensations unknown until now. 
From start to finish, we're going to find out how this radical new roller coaster has become the newest hero of the coaster world. And later, more devastating design elements that'll flip you, twist you, and shoot you to the moon. Egypt has its pyramids. New York City, the Statue of Liberty. Paris has got a tower. World famous landmarks, world famous design innovations. And today in California, the newest monument to design innovation, X at Six Flags Magic Mountain in Valencia, California. It's massive, it's fast. It performs moves you have never experienced at any time anywhere else in the world. X is the future of roller coaster design. The future is now. And the future is insane. Even if you've been on every other roller coaster on the planet, when you sit down on X, every single thing that this ride does is a new experience. It's 20 feet wide, much wider than any other coaster car. Riders don't ride above the rails, rather they ride off either to the left or the right side. The result is you feel as if you are flying through the entire ride. When you stand there and look up at X running, it looks like it's going slow, but it's deceiving. It's like watching a 747 flying through the sky. It looks like it's going in slow motion, but really it's going 500 miles an hour. When you get on X, it doesn't feel like it's going slow. It's screaming. X will go down in history as uh, one of the most important coasters ever, uh, simply because it's doing things no other coaster has even dared try before. The body is flipping one direction while the train's going another direction, so you're getting a combination of movements, which is just really insane. With X at Six Flags Magic Mountain, coaster designer Alan Schilke has developed mind-blowing design innovations that flip, flop, and fly riders through one of the craziest coasters ever built. I don't know Alan Schilke personally, but he must be a nut, totally insane. Most roller coasters today um, are basically trying to uh, simulate one thing, and, and that's what a jet pilot can do in a jet. And uh, there's a lot more crazy things going out there with people skydiving and things, and so I'm just trying to do what I can to duplicate and emulate those moves and let everybody else do it. It's hard to compare X to other coasters. You really need to compare it to other experiences, like uh, being a trapeze artist, leaping from somebody's arms, doing a flip in the air and being caught by somebody else, or uh, going over a waterfall, or being in a train wreck. I don't know. It's, it's, <laughs> it's such an overwhelming experience that you get out of it and you say, what happened? I gotta go again. I was in the first car, but then it, all of a sudden it goes through this different turn, and all of a sudden in the last car. It was, it's, just, it's just amazing. It's amazing. X is a very unusual coaster because it has four rails. The two road rails that you'll find on most coasters that the train rolls over. And it's got a second set of seat rotation rails that vary in distance between the road rails and themselves. And as that distance varies, it drives a rack gear which causes the seats to rotate either in the forward or backward direction. So the cars are not free spinning. It's more like they're being rotated into a particular position during the ride to put you in the most scary position possible. Another unique feature on X is the Raven Turn. Instead of a 360 degree loop, this 270 degree open-ended inversion gives riders a one-of-a-kind thrill. These winged monsters weigh 50,000 pounds. That's bigger than any coaster train ever built. That's 25 tons hitting speeds of 76 miles per hour and pulling 4.5 positive Gs. With stresses like that, Alan Schilke and his team had to give this ride serious support. The concrete caissons go 80 feet down into the ground and hold up a steel structure containing 2.7 million pounds of steel. The technology used in X was developed by Schilke at Aerodynamics, the world famous coaster company. They introduced design innovations like the first tubular steel track coaster, the Matterhorn at Disneyland. A designer like Schilke can see what a ride is going to look like in his innovative mind, but sometimes it's not so easy to get a groundbreaking ride like X off the ground. We made a first stab at designing this coaster about eight years ago, and it never got past the front desk there at Aero because uh, the first time everybody saw anything or even tried to describe it to anybody, the only thing they could say is, ooh, that'd make me sick. 
It was a little too far forward in thinking, I guess, for most people to grasp. The thing that changed was that uh, with the new animation tools that you can do today, you can show people what this ride is before you ever build it. Once we could show the animation to people in real time, and real life, that really kind of let people see what we were thinking. We need to realize that X is a prototype coaster. That is, it's the first time this coaster was ever built. There are a lot of things you can determine by computer analysis, but not everything. So Shilke and his team had to build a smaller version of the future Mindbender back at the Aero facilities in Utah. For nearly two years, the cars, the track, and the gearing mechanisms were tested and refined to make this coaster one of the greatest rides of our time. But with a one-of-a-kind ride like this, even when the last bolt is turned, the work has really just begun. When you put the last piece of track together and send the car around for the first time, you're really nowhere near being ready to open it for the public. There's still a lot of fine tuning that needs to be done. You've got to send the car around many times to get the brake pressure right so that the car stops in the right place, get the control system running so you can run multiple trains, get all the operations in the station. And integral to any ride, the harnessing system. Safety, comfort, practicality, all key elements of a well-designed harness. One of the best kept secrets in the outdoor amusement industry is how safe roller coasters really are. Everyone enjoys the imagined danger. In X, the key to the ride safety is the restraint system. And even the safety restraint system on X is something never seen before. It's uh, different than any other. It's got a vertical butterfly adjustment and it also moves up and down. But I'll get in and show you how it works. When you get in the coaster, the first thing you want to do is pull the restraint down, which is kind of what's revolutionary. When you close this in on you, it fits you both on the shoulders, in the chest, and for uh, the smaller people, it even fits you on the, on the thighs. You've got the safety belt, so from this position here, that's when you'll be exiting out the back of the station and uh, ready for your ride. Two years, over $20 million, and it's opening day. For a ride like X, the media converges from around the globe to introduce this new ride to the world. But mostly, people are just here to have one of the biggest thrills of their lives. Right from the start, X transports you to another dimension. You're 10 feet from the people in front of you or behind you. There's no bad seat. You kind of recline down into it real comfortable. It tips back so your feet are off the ground and you, you feel like you're uh, sitting in a barca lounger ready to take off and you know you're in for a treat because you're nowhere near the vehicle. It's way over on the side. You go up the lift hill backwards so you don't see what's coming ahead of you. On the way up the lift hill, you're, you're getting the best view of the park that you could ever get. Coming off the lift hill, you hit a little bit of a dip, which is uh, kind of gives you the illusion that you're going to go down the first drop, but you don't. And then all of a sudden, uh, you kind of go up a little bit, and then you're pitched forward straight down. And that's when you hit that 89 degrees, and you're just screaming your head off. All of a sudden, you had your, your back you know, and your head going that way, and then you lean forward, and you see it just like free fall. The train begins a 200-foot vertical drop straight down. The seats are rotated, so now you are looking straight down at the ground. You see the ground rushing up towards you, and at the last moment, the seats rotate you, so now you are lying on your back as you bottom out of the ride. The seats flip over, and there you are going backwards again. So you went from straight face forward down to backwards, going up through the first raven. The first raven turn is a big half loop that brings you up, and you went from going backwards, now you're going forwards again, and you're ready for your second face forward, coming towards the ground move. You come right down out of that and go into your backflip. There's nothing like it, unless you're gonna do a backflip on a BMX bike or a motorcycle, you're not really ever gonna be able to experience that. Totally weightless the whole time. Right after that, you go into the luge turn with your feet first. When you come out of the luge turn, you head right for the first really disorienting element, which is the twisting flip. You actually enter forwards, catch air, flip over the top of the track, and turn around, and when you land, you're going backwards. As you exit the twisting flip, you enter the second raven turn, which is your third opportunity on the ride to be face down, you know, looking at the hole, you're, you're gonna barely skim your feet above. That's probably the most uh, intense part of the ride. After you 
come out of that, your, your head face forward once again, and it's the time for the last twisting flip that comes right up into the station. Brad Rowan has been waiting a long time to take on X, and today's the day. He's got a thrill wish for sure. Months, months I've been waiting for this, and now it's finally happening. You can see the whole part from here. Okay, here it goes. It scared me to death. <laughs> it keeps your heart pumping like throughout the whole ride until it ends. And even then it's still pumping because like you're like, wow, that was really, really cool. It's like so fast that like your mouth you go like this with your mouth. <laughs> it, it's really fun. When I wrote it, it uh for the first time, it just totally blew away all my expectations. People are dropping everything, you know, taking sick days from work and getting on planes to come out and ride this thing. When you've worked hard for 18 months straight, killing yourself, you know, day in, day out, sleepless nights and all that. And uh, on a day like today, when it's all coming in and people are riding your ride, you know, it's, it's, it's the big relief and it's the big excitement at the same time. X changes everything. X makes all other rides seem obsolete. Every other park is going to seem like yesterday's park unless they get a ride like this. From ultimate steel to ultimate wood, you're going to experience the origin of insanity with the big bangs of roller coaster madness. They're massive, they're fast, and they're some of the meanest wooden coasters in the universe. You say you like them big? You say you like them fast. How about the kind that bounces you around and shakes you up so good you quiver with excitement? Roller coaster designers utilize the greatest technology of today and yesterday to give you an endless variety of thrilling ride experiences. So, if a body shaking, head spinning ride is a necessity, then there are only two words you need to know Big Wood. Many coaster buffs prefer wooden roller coasters because they are noisier, they are ricketier. Part of the sensation when you're riding a wooden roller coaster is the feeling that the coaster has some give and take, that you feel the coaster sway. With wood coasters, you have a lot of structure that's very close to you. And oftentimes the coasters are built turning back on themselves and running through the same structure that they just came out of in such a way that you have what we call head chopper overhead. And at certain points, you'll have your hands up in the air and you'll put them back down in your lap because you know you, know, you think that that wood's gonna get close to you. When I was 17, I rode the Coney Island Cyclone 1001 times to break a world record. Mike Boodley didn't just break a world record. His marathon ride on the world-famous Cyclone at Coney Island brought so much publicity, it saved the coaster from a wrecking ball. The record took 45 straight hours. It was pretty exhausting. It was much more fatiguing than I ever thought it would be. You know, at 17 years old, I just thought it'd be fun. His life's passion? Terrifying you. Crazy Mike Boodley, today he's designing what I consider some of the best wooden roller coasters that are being introduced. My love is the wooden coasters. I think they have a very beautiful look. They have a very natural look to them. And I just like wood. I like the feel, I like the sound. I like the kind of ride you get off of a wooden coaster. Mike designed one of the greatest wooden coasters on the West Coast, Roar, at Six Flags Marine World, just outside San Francisco. Roar is an excellent, uh, example of the classic wooden coaster. It was designed and built in 1999, yet it harkens back to the classic coasters of the 20s. 
Roar may harken back to the old days of coaster riding, but this terrifying wooden monster is a 21st century scare machine. The key design feature for Roar is that it is so twisted. Roar would be an experience that hopefully leaves you very confused. You'd come off not being able to figure out what just happened to you, where you went. The ride goes under and over itself 22 times, reaches speeds in excess of 50 miles an hour, and you have about nine periods of weightlessness in the ride. It's what we call a spaghetti bowl twister. And the only way to take the extreme turns on this twisted beast is with specially designed coaster cars. When we design and build a roller coaster, we're concentrating on a good quality ride. Uh, we're concentrating on, on a smooth ride that, that people can re-ride, uh, they'll have a lot of fun on. So Roar was the, first, was the first ride that we built that incorporated our own vehicles to it. The articulated trains are basically um, the cars hooked together individually as opposed to a two bench or three bench configuration, which makes for unbelievably tight navigation around turns and, and drops. So our vehicles that we put on the ride allowed us to really, with Roar, to really twist up the track a lot more than, than we could have using, a, using an aftermarket vehicle. And Roar was, I think, the first ride where everything came together uh, and, and allowed us to do these transitions quickly and really, really make a really incredibly twisted ride, which was what the customer wanted. This ride may look like something your grandfather rode, but when you hit the lift, you're gonna realize Roar is the next generation of thrills. First drop, 90 feet, and the dizzying maze begins. Out of that first turn and up the second hill, Catch some nice air before taking a 180 degree return that drives you back down into the belly of the beast. The crossbeams scream by overhead. The entire massive wood structure surrounds you, giving you the feeling that you're going faster than you really are. One thing this ride's known for, the lateral G's. That's what you get when you're thrown back and forth around some of the tightest turns you've ever experienced. Roar delivers one more great design element, the 200-foot tunnel that tosses the last pieces of your mind to the lions. With a 3,647-foot laminated wooden track and a nearly two-minute ride time, Roar at Six Flags Marine World is Northern California's premier monster wood coaster. But about 300 miles to the south, this animal has got some giant competition. Colossus at Six Flags Magic Mountain, less than an hour from Los Angeles. And this enormous creature lives up to its name. With this much wood surrounding you, there is so much noise, you can barely hear yourself scream. Colossus is just this huge, massive white structure that's spectacular to look at. And the closer you get to it, the bigger it looks. Colossus is the tallest wooden roller coaster on the West Coast. You get the creaking wood sounds and the rushing trains. It's just a lap bar, so you have freedom to move your hands around. And then it also has dual track, which means it's a racing coaster. And if we send the train simultaneously, they can race all throughout the ride. But just the sound of it being rickety is, is scary alone. Like the, the sound of like is, is frightening. It's extremely long. It's about 4,500 feet on both sides. And you know, that huge 125 foot first drop. It's cavernous. It looks like you're going over the side of the Grand Canyon. Designers live for the first drop. It's where you first come under their total control. It's where your body takes over, where your mind leaves off. Imagined danger, the adrenaline rush. And it's what a coaster ride is all about. Anytime you feel you're in danger, you'll get a rush of adrenaline. It'll put all your senses on red alert, and that's what makes a good coaster ride good. Adrenaline. For hardcore coaster fans, it's like nectar of the gods. When you take that first drop, your body's fight or flight instinct takes over. In a few microseconds, the adrenal glands pump out a serious hormone into your bloodstream, adrenaline. Your heart rate and breathing quicken, your blood vessels expand, your body's thinking, get me out of here. Ever feel a sense of exhaustion and euphoria at the end of a coaster ride? Adrenaline junkies do. Well, the two minutes you just spent on a thrill machine have tricked your body into thinking it just ran about two miles and avoided some serious permanent damage. It's also the same sensation you might have after a variety of other activities. While many coasters will compare a good coaster ride to to a great sex. Oh! <laughs> I think many others 
will admit uh, on a coaster ride, that's where they find religion. Hi, I'm Navi Rawat, and I'm here on Colossus in Six Flags Magic Mountain in Valencia, California. And Colossus is the largest wooden roller coaster on the West Coast. So now we're at the top, and we're about to go down the first major drop. I'm gonna make sure I'm buckled in, I don't fly out of this thing, uh, which is the largest drop on this roller coaster. And it's terrifying. See the wooden beam, you're like, oh no, my arms are gonna get caught, but they're not going to. You could just throw your hands up in the sky and just feel like you're flying. Colossus, roar, big wood coasters. There is nothing like the adrenaline rush you can get from two of the greatest wooden coasters ever built. Designers are constantly competing to give riders the latest and craziest in coaster fun. And one of the newest bad boys on the block will make you feel like the floor fell out from under you, literally. It's Medusa, a design phenomenon, and it'll turn your squirming, screaming body to stone. Roller coaster designers know that coaster fans are always searching for new, more intense ways to drive themselves into states of velocity-induced ecstasy. And that means it's not just what rails you ride, but how you ride them. We're seeing an increasing variety of different styles of coasters, uh, amphibious coasters, spinning coasters, converted coasters, tumbling coasters like X. I now count 35 different styles and variations of roller coasters. I'm sure there's more on the horizon. And one of the most radical new experiences can be found at Six Flags Marine World, just outside San Francisco. Imagine having someone yank the floor right out from under you, so all you see is a whole lot of landscape rushing underneath your dangling legs. Well, take a look at the face of Medusa. It'll turn even the toughest coaster fan to stone. Medusa is a floorless coaster where they uh, take away some of your security by taking away the floor of the ride. So uh, we've ridden on, on rides where your legs dangle, but usually the track is above you. This time the track is below you and it's threatening to take out your shoes. It's a little unnerving. This vicious creature takes riders down a 150-foot first drop and hits eye-rolling speeds of 65 miles an hour. And with your feet whipping madly past nearly 4,000 feet of cold steel track, you're going to feel like you're flying within an inch of your life. It's long and it has some great elements that uh, give total airtime out of your seat. It has the world's largest loop. It's huge, it's massive. I mean, that's what I like about it. And you're just kind of like weightless at the top of the loop. Loops, the teardrop-shaped brain shakers that designers use to confuse and confound coaster fans. There is no other experience like it. Everything's a blur. If you're looking up, everything's just a blur and it just feels like your body's just turning you, around and flipping and everything. You can't tell top from bottom either yeah. way. A design feature that made its debut less than 30 years ago. The loop is an integral part of today's coaster experience. When you go on a loop, you know, compared to a drop, the loop changes the mentality of the ride all of a sudden. And you don't expect it, and it just goes boom. I mean, you see it coming, it goes up, but next thing you know, it feels like you're stalling, 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 but then you're back again. 
The oblong shape of the loop allows riders to enter the inversion at safe speeds while still enabling the coaster car to make the full circuit of the loop. The simple loop has led to other incredible inversions like cobra rolls, barrel rolls, and any other upside down head to the ground move you can think of. And on Medusa, inversions are the name of the game. So you better hope your heart can pump something a little more potent than adrenaline, because you're going to need it to get through this one. It's insane. That's all I got to say. It's insane. So now, see firsthand how Medusa at Six Flags Marine World will make you feel like you're flying feet first into pure fun. First drop and into the incredible positive Gs of the first loop, the biggest in the world. In version number two, Medusa crushes your will as you hit the sweeping barrel roll. Diving a few feet below ground level will give you the feeling you're going to hit pavement. Say hello to the negative Gs as Medusa shoots you up into the wicked back-to-back -back inversions known as the Sea Serpent. You barely have time to catch your breath before you roll into a banking turn and into your sixth inversion. Then into a 360 degree corkscrew and up into one more inversion. Ride inches from the ground for a few hundred feet and into the station. You are now officially a shell of your former self. Oh my God, it's so it was really fun. <laughs> Medusa, stone cold chaos. Some coaster fans want it long and vicious, but designers know just as many people like riding them fast and tight. And a seriously twisted ride like in Vertigo at Paramount's Great America in Santa Clara, California, less than an hour from San Francisco, will make you realize how merciless the architects of terror really are. We're here because uh, we have a club about coasters in Spain and we need to feel the power. Ralph Navarro and his friends have come halfway around the world to ride the maddening monsters only California can offer. And in Vertigo is one of the craziest. In Vertigo shows no mercy. After you're strapped in, you're dragged up the first tower only to be dropped 55 miles an hour back through the station, then through a 70 foot boomerang turn, then a 70 foot loop. This bad boy throws you up a 138-foot spike, grabs you for a few seconds, then drops you back through that loop into the disorienting boomerang roll through the station and back up the first tower. Invertigo opened in 1998, and it was the world's first inverted suspended face-to-face -face coaster. That means you can look into the screaming faces and pleading eyes of your friends and loved ones. Invertigo gives riders a variety of design elements. You've got speed, you've got inversions. On two massive towers, you can achieve glorious airtime and positive Gs smack you down all the way through this wild ride. In a word, Boomerang. A Boomerang is a generic name for a coaster built by Vacoma, which has two inclined lift hills and three inversions that you go through both forward and backward. David Escalante is the Northern California director of ACE, the American coaster enthusiast. And today, he's gonna show us what it means to look at the face of fear. Okay, the floor has just dropped, so that means we're about to take a spin on in vertigo. I think what the designers had in mind was to disorient the riders as quickly as possible. Uh, we're going to go through six inversions in about 45 seconds. We're about nearing the top of the first 138-foot uh, spike. We're going to be blasting through the station at about 55 miles an hour. It's a beautiful view from up here, but you know what, folks? It's not going to last very long because we're heading straight down, right through the station, up into the first element. <laughs> The boomerang, and here we go into the loop. We're <laughs> and we're going to head up the second 138-foot spike. And if that weren't enough, folks, we get to do this all again, this time backwards. So here we go. Yeah! <laughs> I like it better backwards. <laughs> Oh, jeez, and, um, 
going backwards is especially disorienting because you have no idea what's left, what's right, what's upside down, what's in front of you, what's in back of you. It's in Vertigo here at Paramount Great America. Come check it out. V, two, one, blast off with some spiralicious airtime on a free falling roller coaster. Coming up, it's V2, vertical velocity, a Northern California design phenomenon. All you have to do is look at the screaming, laughing faces of roller coaster riders to know that designing a coaster is all about creating a fantasy. And that fantasy is experiencing the most intense thrills imaginable, but without the danger. I think everyone likes to test the edge. I don't think everyone can be a race car driver or a sky driver. Roller coaster ride provides that same thrill, but it does it safely. Ever watch those guys up in space floating around? They're astronauts. They're having the ultimate zero-G fantasy. Notice the smiles on their faces. Well, if zero G's and airtime is what you earthbound dreamers are looking for, then a trip to Northern California's Six Flags Marine World will take you out of this world. V2, vertical velocity, is a gravity-defying twister of a shuttle coaster. What's a shuttle coaster? It's the kind that doesn't complete a full circuit out of the station and back like a traditional coaster. This modern style roller coaster goes forward to one end, then backwards to the other. And vertical velocity is a shuttle coaster so much like another kind of shuttle, you just might think you're leaving Earth's gravity and flying through outer space. Vertical velocity is an inverted impulse coaster, inverted in that the seats hang from overhead rails, impulse in that it uses uh, linear induction motors to launch the coaster. With a uh, vertical spiral on the front tower where you rotate 360 degrees as you're heading up towards the clouds in zero G. It has that unique corkscrew twist, which you're experiencing both forward and backwards because it's at the end of this giant spike. And then you do it backwards, heading back down towards the ground. As you go up the back tower on V2, you're going absolutely vertical, which means you have zero force of gravity. You're completely in zero G, floating around in the seat between the seat and the restraint. It's almost like being in a giant swing, being pushed every time you come forward, you're also being pushed backwards. Uh, you climb the front and rear towers five times. It's a wild ride from start to finish. These days that we're coming up, the, the launched coaster system is uh, a big thing. That's just a different kind of thrill. It's still a gravity coaster once it leaves the launch. You're just replacing the lift with something else. So instead of anticipation, you just get thrilled. And the gravity-defying propulsion system for this rocket roller coaster, limbs, or linear induction motors. The linear synchronous motors that propel vertical velocity are very similar to the electric motors you would find in a fan or a hair dryer in your own home, except instead of imparting a circular motion, they impart a linear motion. Electromagnetic power pushes the train first in one direction. As it comes back, it again magnetically pushes the train in the backward direction. Limbs have definitely changed the design of coasters in general because, well, now you can accelerate trains from anywhere on the track with simply a set of limbs. So now, climb aboard V2, buckle yourself in, and count down to terror. The first set of induction motors shoot you up 70 miles an hour into the first 185-foot tower. The 360-degree spiral is 100% space shuttle. Let gravity take over as you drop backwards. Back through the station. Limbs kick in. Up the second tower, 150 feet, zero gravity, airtime. Stare 90 degrees down at the merciless Earth. V2 drops you and your stomach back and forth four more times. V2, it's got vertical, it's got velocity, and it's very, very scary. So, if you've ever wanted to find out what it's like to go into orbit, V2 at Six Flags Marine World is the way to get there.
Designers know that coaster fans love the feeling of flying. It's what brings them back to a theme park again and again. And the swooping, sanity-shaking ninja at Six Flags Magic Mountain near Los Angeles will make you feel like a falcon screaming over the California landscape. Built by design leader Aerodynamics and introduced in 1990, Ninja's unique structure is unlike anything else on the west coast of the USA. Ninja is an extremely popular coaster. It probably has a wider range of appeal than any other coaster. Um, little kids love it, grandparents love it, everybody loves Ninja. It's the only suspended roller coaster on the west coast. The cars are free to swing left and right as you go around through the zigzag turns. It makes very good use of the terrain coming very close to the ground a number of times. Ninja is like dangling and there's twists and turns and you go by water. Personally, it's my favorite roller coaster at Magic Mountain because you dangle. It's like you're in these little boxes and you're just going through the trees and you're just swinging around. Coaster fans love Ninja, maybe because it makes you feel like you're really soaring toward the horizon. It's all about flying and flying very fast. What's up, everybody? My name's Lisa. I'm at Six Flags Magic Mountain with my boyfriend, Jim, right here. What up, Jim? Hi. Everybody say hi. We're on the uh, Ride Ninja right now. There's a rail above us, there's nothing below us but uh, some water and some trees. We're getting crazy right now. Woo! The first drop, flying through the air. Woo! Taking the first turn here, getting a little wet, crazy. Oh, so beautiful out there. Woo! I like going like the, the right banks and just down the water line. So you have no idea where you're gonna turn next. You can't really tell where you're going because you're going so fast and you're moving side to side. I feel like kind of like a monkey because I'm just like <laughs> going through the trees, kind of like a butterfly or something, because you're just like you're kind of wafting through the air and it's yeah, it's like surfing maybe. Yeah. Oh dude, surfing. Ninjas like surfing, surfing a tidal wave. Coaster after California coaster. Newer, more insane ways of riding on the cutting edge will continue to challenge designers, theme parks, and the most hard to please coaster fans. The future is big and bright. It's already been announced by Arrow that um, they'll be introducing a 700 foot coaster slash freefall ride. So, I mean, you know, where do you go from there? A 700 foot roller coaster? That's 100 feet taller than the Seattle Space Needle. Coaster designers are only limited by their imaginations. I think the future of roller coasters is taking away more of your security, taking away the security of having a place to put your feet, taking away the security of having a place to hold on, taking away the security of knowing which way up and down is. There are many manufacturers, I think, who have totally different ideas of where coasters are going to go in the future, and that's, that's really the beauty of it, and that'll you know, give everybody the greatest chance to do different rides experience different things. You want something fast. You want something crazy. So let your imagination run wild because almost anything you can think of is right here, right now. They're designs of excitement. They're designs of madness. California roller coasters, designs of terror. 24-7, just numbers. Vegas, just a word. Yeah, right. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, Las Vegas is wide open, and what it sells is thrills, chills, and a whole lot of fun. Vegas has become the world's largest. Incredible. It blows your mind. I love Las Vegas for the latest and the greatest in entertainment and the newest good times innovations are big fast and insane roller coasters in las vegas have become a phenomenal success they've been able to bring people into the hotels in record numbers the 
strip has experienced tremendous success because of this. New century, new thrills. It's about height, it's about airtime, and you got it, it's about speed. Speed the Ride at Sahara Hotel and Casino is one of the hottest tickets at one of the oldest casinos on the Strip. First opened in 1952 and crowned the sixth jewel of the Strip, the Sahara was and still remains an oasis for outrageous fun. We go zero to 45 in under two seconds. And just like the Sahara, Speed the Ride is unforgettable. Then out on the track, we actually boost again from 40 to 70 miles an hour in under two seconds. Introduced in 2000, Speed the Ride is part of a new generation of coaster that uses the latest technology to hurdle riders down the track at unheard of speeds. Linear induction motor is just like a regular AC motor that's just spread out flat. We have 176 of these motors laid out throughout the track and we create a magnetic field that the coaster itself tries to keep up with. For me, the best part of Speed the Ride is the combination tunnel and loop. When you're going forward, you pop out of the tunnel straight into a vertical loop, and when you're going backwards, you plummet out of the vertical loop straight underground. You can't prepare for what you're about to feel. Just the sudden exhilaration of the G's that just hit you. We can get up to four G's uh, longitudinal and under two G's lateral. Those are positive G's. That means you've got twice your weight pushing against your body every which way. With 1,365 feet of track and a 45 second ride time, it's not the longest ride in Vegas, but for dedicated fans, Speed the Ride is one of the best. I'm still, I'm still shaking, and I left half my stomach on that zero G thing at the end. You almost have to experience it two or three times just to get the honest feel of the ride. And when the Sahara Hotel introduced this silky smooth ride to the world, they pulled out all the stops by inviting the king of uh, the kings of rock and roll to take the very first ride. Oh, and by the way, Vegas is home to more Elvis impersonators per square mile than anywhere else in the world. The Elvi have definitely left the building. It's out of the casino and into daylight and up into a 72 foot high loop. Coming out, the second set of linear induction motors open up, kicking you to the 70 mile per hour mark. And before you know it, speed drives you to the top of a 222 foot tower and into some juicy airtime. One off? Yeah, too bad. It's return to sender for these guys, because Speed the Ride gives it to you all over again backwards. That's why they call this hunk of burning love a boomerang coaster. The adrenaline rush is great. This ride's good as jumping out of a plane. I love it. I want to do it again. Thank you. Thank you very much. If the flying Elvi love this ride, it's got to be great. Las Vegas is all about extremes. Extreme hotels, extreme sights, sounds, and fun. Whether it's eating at great restaurants or gambling the night away at more than 100 casinos, Vegas can take you to places you never dreamed possible. Yo, it looks like it, but it ain't New York City, and the next stop ain't Coney Island. You're making a transfer, bub, to new heights of terror. When you walk up or you drive up to New York, New York, you cannot miss this ride. It is whizzing by you the moment you walk up. The awesome Manhattan Express roller coaster winds through the impressive structure of the New York, New York Hotel and Casino. Opened in 1997 and located right on the strip, it's hard to miss New York, New York. The unbelievable architecture shows off some of the most eye-catching replicas of New York City's great landmarks. The scaled-down models of the Statue of Liberty and the Brooklyn Bridge will put you into a New York, New York state of mind. With nearly 5,000 feet of track and almost a four-minute ride time, the Manhattan Express is one of the longest coasters around. What's really great is it goes over the casino itself and you get to see the whole strip. Everything here looks like New York City. Even the taxicab coaster cars will make you feel like you're racing down 2nd Avenue. And this coaster has got something even the toughest fans are looking for. The world's first Heartline Twist and Dive, it's a feature that makes numerous roller coaster enthusiasts from, from all over the world just experience the Manhattan Express. Hardcore roller coaster fans are going to lose their stomach on this ride with three positive Gs going through the Twist and Dive Heartline Maneuver. 
Manhattan Express's most unique element is the diving heartline loop, where the train is traveling straight ahead. It rolls completely upside down, hangs you upside down for a split second, and then finishes like a vertical loop. The heartline maneuver, a coaster lover's favorite. That's when the center of gravity is right in the middle of your chest. So when you spin, you feel just like a jet pilot flying right through a barrel roll. The Manhattan Express here at New York, New York is one of the best roller coasters in Las Vegas. In fact, probably in the world. Todd Throgmorton should know. He is the author of three books on roller coasters, and he's hailed this ride dozens of times. We're climbing the 203-foot lift of the 4,777-foot long Manhattan Express. Here we are at the top. We're going to get a last look around. All right. And here we go, it's gonna be a blur now. 75 feet, first drop. Yeah! Woo! All right! But that was just a warm up, because the second drop is 14 stories at 67 miles an hour! Woo! Yeah! Incredible! We've got one single vertical loop, 70 feet high. We're getting ready to enter it right now! Yeah! And quickly, we're going to go up to the world first. Heartline twist and dive. 180 degrees and diving back. What a move. Oh. Now we get to catch our breath a little bit and take a look around. There's the Statue of Liberty. Here we go again. Another drop. Yeah. Woohoo! Oh. We're on top of the casino. Here we go. Yeah! What a ride! And some traditional camelback! Woo! Yeah! Oh, the 540 degree spiral! Yeah! Couple more bumps! If you can make it on this oh. ride, you can make it anywhere. It's up to you. And that's it. The Manhattan Express. New York, New York. This is our fifth year in a row, and we don't miss riding the New York, New York roller coaster. This one was really exciting and surprising and fast and scary. We had an all-day pass yesterday. We rode it six times. Six, seven times. We're getting ready to go on it again. Four times at night. It's beautiful. You see all the lights. Scream. <laughs> in a word, this ride is all about the scream. There's no doubt about it. Las Vegas roller coasters can rocket you to heights you never thought possible. How high do you want to go? 200? 500? How about 1,000 feet up? The Stratosphere definitely was designed for the adventurous in mind. Completed in 1996 at a cost of $550 million, the Stratosphere Hotel and Casino grabs your attention. It took four years to construct this tower. It's over 1,100 feet tall. In fact, it's the tallest structure west of the Mississippi River. And winding around the very top of the tower, a roller coaster? That's right, high roller. This baby's the highest roller coaster on the planet. The ground is 900 feet below, and that adds the level of apprehension of riders. I don't think from the street you really realize how high this is. You get up here, and I had to take a deep breath <laughs> when I first looked out the window. It's up 100 stories above the ground, and it skirts the outside of the observation deck so that people get a bird's eye view of incredible Las Vegas day or at night. You dip down and then around and up and around and you can see everything. It's really neat. The second time around, you slow way down, you can see all the lights, and then all of a sudden you dip down and drop and go back into it again. That was fun. And if the incredible views aren't enough, then feeling like you're gonna spin right out of your seat will keep you begging for more. Oh, <laughs> the height and the tight turns make you feel like you're really flying over the Las Vegas skyline. High Roller serves up an impressive 32 degree banking turn. The effect gives you the feeling you're gonna fall right out of your seat. Just enough scare factor to rattle your nerves and make you ask the question, how high up are we again? You're out in the middle of nowhere, up in the air, it's just 
Awesome. All day, all night, this over-the-top party town delivers a one-two punch of non-stop fun and insane thrills. If Las Vegas is the crazy uncle of the roller coaster world, then Southern California is the big daddy. Off-the-hook fun and cutting-edge thrills are what this part of the world is all about, and there's one place to get it all. Less than an hour north of Los Angeles in Valencia, California, Six Flags Magic Mountain invented adrenaline. With 15 coasters, you could blow your mind for days at a time. One of the newest rides at Six Flags Magic Mountain, one of the newest rides at Six Flags Magic Mountain is Deja Vu. No, you're not losing your mind, but you just might after you've ridden this boomerang coaster forwards and backwards, giving you a feeling of Deja Vu. Okay. Deja Vu is the world's tallest and fastest looping boomerang roller coaster. Riding Deja Vu is a little bit like riding a traditional boomerang coaster, but this is a coaster on steroids. Deja Vu is 199 feet tall. Riders sit four abreast. You are towed backwards, straight up in the air, 199 feet, held there, suspended for a moment before you are released. You drop straight down, race through the loading platform, through a double barrel roll, turns you upside down once, twice, drops you down into a vertical loop, up another tower. You don't know when you're going to be released. You are, and then you repeat the entire circuit, this time in reverse. They take you up to your horizontal to the ground, so it just looks like you're going to fall flat on your face. So it's really freaky. The only thing that's holding you is the little harness, and you think you're going to fall out, and then it just swoop, and you like lose your breath. And it's one of the few rides where you really rely on those restraints to keep you, because when you're going backwards, I mean, you're full body weight is on that restraint. If that thing goes, you go, but that's never gonna happen. We're in the midst of a roller coaster renaissance today. Today's coasters are being built bigger, faster, better than ever before. And today's designers can show a theme park like Six Flags Magic Mountain exactly how their multi-million dollar ride is gonna look and feel before a girder is lifted or a bolt is turned. Computer diagramming and animation can highlight every heart-stopping dive, twist, turn, and loop. The design of Deja Vu begins uh, with mechanical engineers at their computers. They calculate the forces at every point through the ride, make sure there is enough strength in the steel to keep the coaster from tearing itself apart. And they also have to calculate the forces on the riders so that riders will be comfortable yet frightened. With the aid of computer technology, engineers can twist and bend steel into thrill machines never before thought possible. And when Deja Vu opened, this beast of a boomerang quickly took the coaster world by storm. It's one of the most incredible coasters you will ever see or ride. When you're going backwards, uh, is the best. You're gonna love Deja Vu so much, you're gonna wanna ride it again and again and again. Yep, good time. 10 times. Yeah, Brooke Genzer is a hardcore fan. Just 18 years old, she's been riding for more than half her life. Probably like five years old, my mom got me started on them, and so here I am, 14 years later, still riding roller coasters and loving them. The adrenaline that it gives me, and just like the speed, the G, just the everything, like the whole entire package is just like, it's all in one, so it's just like, it's so great and so awesome. And now, let's go for a ride with Brooke on Deja Vu. All right, here we go, out of the loading station, pulling us straight up, 90 degrees, looking straight down.
like the whole entire time. You can tell how good a ride is on how tough the stagger is. The tougher the stagger, the better the ride. I'm shaking from it. Like I love roller coasters. It's just like it's smooth and like my speechless must be love. But what if you loved roller coasters so much you'd actually move from another country to be near some of the greatest in the world? <laughs> it has brought me to Southern California, which is the mecca of roller coasters. Ian Marshall hails from the great white North Canada, and he's found his bliss in the U.S. of A. There's such a high concentration of parks here great world-class rides. That's what magnetized me to this area. Like so many fans, Ian started as a kid, and the passion has never left him. It was while riding Big Thunder Mountain Railroad that something clicked, and I found myself in a state of uh, pure, unbridled glee. From then on, I became obsessed. My Christmas present was a, a season pass to an amusement park. Coaster fans and the people who love them. It takes patience, understanding, and maybe just a little love of the rush, too. And there's no bigger rush than riding a world-class coaster like Viper. Viper is the world's tallest and fastest looping roller coaster. It's located at the top of the plateau in Six Flags Magic Mountains. You can pretty much see it from anywhere. And it reaches speeds in excess of 70 miles per hour. It also flips riders through seven, count them, seven inversions. The first loop hits you right out of the dive, the world's highest vertical loop. 140 feet of cold, unforgiving steel. Before you can beg for mercy, Viper whips you into two more consecutive loops. The Cobra Roll leads into a triple helix that throws riders into a total state of chaos. The twists and turns are the best. All the loopy loops of this world, awesome. There's nothing but loops and it's killer. It's killer. I'm Ian. Hi, I'm Jade. And we're here at Six Flags Magic Mountain riding the Viper. And we're in the front row. One million pounds of steel. Three quarters of a mile long. 188 feet tall. Ouch. Let's rock. First drop. Oh, this is the hugest loop I've ever been through in my life. Don't go to the nacho stand right before this one. Here comes the second loop. This is insane. Here we go. Train is out of control. Driver, slow down. I think this is my stop. The Cobra roll, everybody, the Cobra roll. Hold on, we're going through. This party train just won't stop. Woo! Corkscrew, everybody, we forgot about the corkscrew. Hold on, here we go. Woo! All right. Woo! The party Woo! train. I think I swallowed some G-Force. For coaster fans, Six Flags Magic Mountain is the end all in the quest for the ultimate thrill. And maybe riding roller coasters means something even more. For me, it's uh, unbridled fun, it's freedom. He's not a fanatic, but he's a connoisseur. And for friends, couples, and families, roller coasters can offer more than just a rush. You have this moment afterward where you're all sort of, oh, wasn't that just the best feeling you ever had? And you, you have this opportunity just to share this <laughs> heartfelt emotion about roller coasters. There's a bonding experience that occurs riding together and going through a, a challenging ride, going down a 100-foot plummet together. And uh, it, it, I think it makes you closer. I'm pooped. How about hustling? One look, and there's no doubt, roller coaster fans are 100% genuine, completely nuts. No matter how big or how small, if it's got wheels and a track, they are there. There's some serious coaster love out there, and no one is more passionate about insane thrills than Acers, members of the American Coaster Enthusiasts. The American Coaster Enthusiasts, of which I'm a member, is the largest 
coaster organization. We have our conferences, conventions where we get together and uh, it's like one big happy family, a little 8,500 member family, I guess. And a family this big has got to have some influence. Theme parks and the media look to acers like Paul Rubin and David Escalante to find out what fans expect in a coaster. They look to us for our expertise and uh, we're the ones who've ridden hundreds, uh, dozens or hundreds of rides, and uh, we know our stuff. And what they know is that a coaster doesn't always have to be the tallest or the longest to drive riders crazy. The appearance of Batman was revolutionary. It was the uh, first time we have seen an inverted coaster, that is track overhead, people riding below, that would take riders through a vertical loop. It was not the biggest or fastest coaster, but the thrill elements are packed so tightly together. It's such a compact coaster that it takes your breath away through the entire ride. It was so popular that it was cloned all over the country. There's, there's like six of them now. It has a heartline spin, double loops, double corkscrew, and uh, it's just boom, 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 nonstop from start to finish. It's extremely intense, and I think that's what people enjoy about it. Batman carried out its theme beautifully. As you approach the ride, the queue line wanders through a derelict portion of Gotham City until you find you uh, have to escape the clutches from one of Batman's villains by actually climbing aboard the Bat Coaster, painted black like Batman. It's themed to look like Batman. In the loading platform, you'll find uh, Batman's costume. You climb aboard, take it out, fly through and over and above Gotham City in a wild ride. Built by the firm of Bullinger and Mabillard in 1994, Batman hits speeds of 50 miles per hour, pulls four Gs, and delivers two corkscrews in a half mile of track. And Batman's heart-pounding heartline maneuver gives riders the feeling of pure, blissful weightlessness. It doesn't even give you time to breathe. Hang on, Alyssa. This bat's got bite. Even a crazy acer can't keep her head through the heart-stopping heartline maneuver, especially when it's topped off with another vertical loop. Crazy speeds, legendary loops, ceaseless spins. This roller coaster Cape Crusader will drive the toughest opponent to the brink of insanity. Wow, that was great. It's so fast and rapid and everything. It's like, it's breathtaking. When you get thrown about and your legs are just dangling. It's rock and roll. Holy heart stoppers. Batman the Ride will make you fall in love with this steel superhero. But what if your dream is to ride a roller coaster that'll give you nightmares? Your parents probably told you monsters don't exist. They were wrong. Rising high over the California landscape at Six Flags Magic Mountain, Goliath commands the horizon. At 235 feet high, reaching speeds of 70 miles an hour and cranking out 4.5 positive Gs, Goliath heads up nearly every best coaster top 10 list. Completed in 2000 at a cost of $14 million, Goliath has become one of the main attractions at a park that boasts 15 roller coasters. Goliath is a hyper coaster, and the moment you hit the lift, you're gonna know exactly what that means. Sweating palms, racing heart, the design team at Premier Rides knows how to drive coaster fans crazy. First drop, a 61 degree angle through a 150 foot underground tunnel. The sudden darkness makes you feel like you're going even faster than the miles per hour you're clocking, nearly 70. Gorgeous positive Gs as you come out of the tunnel and head up into a 60 foot bank. Confusion is your middle name as Goliath rips you through its monstrous curves. Goliath is three minutes of pure steel ecstasy, a hyper coaster that lives up to the hype. Goliath Jr., mind-boggling. Goliath Jr., 
extreme. Thrills aren't just for adults. A few months after it opened, Goliath's little brother made his appearance, Goliath Jr. If you're under 54 inches, you can't ride Goliath. But if you still can't function without your daily dose of adrenaline, Goliath Jr. will get you there. With a devastating first drop of 10 feet and speeds reaching up to 10 miles an hour, kids won't have nightmares over this ride, but the thrill will give them a taste of so much more to come. If your kids like roller coasters and you like spending a lot of time with your kids, there's nothing like a roller coaster vacation to make you really feel like a family. Whether you're riding bad boys like Goliath or children's fun coasters like Goliath Jr., there's something for everyone. And with dozens of serious coasters to choose from, kids can get started early and often. With any luck, it'll be a lifelong love affair with wood and steel. For nearly a century, coaster designers have been twisting wood and steel to create scream machines that smash the boundaries of human imagination. And California has been there from the start, creating legendary coasters that have been thrilling riders for generations. And if you want to experience a living legend, then a ride on the Belmont Park Giant Dipper, located at Mission Beach, San Diego, will give you the whole story. Built in 1925, in just 45 days, at a cost of $150,000, the Belmont Park Giant Dipper still got skills. It packs a mean wallop. It's a twisting, turning coaster. Action from the moment you drop off the lift hill through the entire ride, there's never a dull spot. An amazing ride for such a compact roller coaster. I've been riding roller coasters since I was one. Talk about a fan. Seven-year-old Tara Schultz got an adrenaline habit that could knock out a heavyweight champion. And she wants to ride the dipper bad. But there's a problem. I have to be 50 inches to ride the roller coaster, but I'm only 49. First rule, don't get in the way of a coaster lover and her ride. I have my hair up and I'm in my tall boot so I can get on it. I'm feeling just great, like a miracle just happened to me. I'm tall enough. Let's hope Tara doesn't get more than she bargained for. And it turned you and turned you, tossed you all over. Like you're get you're rolling on the bed. It's fun, but it doesn't go upside down. So you want to be scared, really scared? How about terrified? Completely and utterly terrified. Try wrangling one of the tallest and fastest roller coasters in North America. In the scorching Nevada desert lives a roller coaster outlaw, Desperado. Located 40 miles from Las Vegas and hiding out at Buffalo Bill's Hotel and Casino, this cold-hearted fun slinger will leave you begging for mercy. Desperado is 209 feet tall, uh, but the drop is a total of 225 because it goes 16 feet into an underground tunnel. Again, that's 225 feet, a 20-story freakout into utter madness. I love going through a tunnel at the bottom of the ride because you can hear the screams of the other riders. It's intensified. One of the selling features of Desperado is that it's an extremely long ride. This brute was crowned one of the first hyper coasters, a new generation of roller coaster that's bigger, faster, and more terrifying than anything ever seen before. That kind of height can mean only one thing, speed. Clocked it up to 90 miles an hour, the Desperado is a body-shaking, brain-rattling rush. And another thing this ride is known for? Airtime. Serious speeds on massive camelbacks deliver negative Gs that give you some intense weightlessness. Check this out. Hang on to your valuables on this monster. And with over one mile of steel track, the Desperado rides high as one mean bandito. I you think it's going to cool out for a bit, and then I'll it's like... I love coasters, Dave. John Lane is a wicked coaster fan, but... Auto. Let's see if he's quick enough to take down this bad boy. We're climbing about 210 feet. 
I like to wear a little protection. In case we run into any birds, you know? Oh, I'm not ready. People should visit this coaster, man. This is the most like, I mean, Vegas has some good ones, but this is definitely like a super coaster. It's fast, it's fun. It's a furious ride uh, from beginning to end. Last stop on this wild, wild Western coaster marathon, Las Vegas, the sparkling diamond in the desert. In 1940, there were just 8,000 residents. Today, this glimmering party town boasts a population of more than one and a half million people and draws hundreds of millions more every year to revel in its awesome sights and sounds. And until only about 20 years ago, Las Vegas was a strictly adult playground. But today, it's designed for young and old alike. And Circus Circus Hotel and Casino, right on the Strip, is a non-stop carnival ride. Not only will you get some great shows under the big top, but one more thing you won't find anywhere else. The world's largest indoor double loop, double corkscrew roller coaster. Opened in 1993 at a cost of $90 million, Adventure Dome is a cool and comfortable break from the Las Vegas heat. And at the center of it all, Canyon Blaster, built by Aerodynamics of Clearfield, Utah in 1994. Canyon Blaster gives riders a unique and terrifying experience. The Canyon Blaster offers the sensation of being on a much faster roller coaster than it actually is because you're enclosed by a giant pink dome and you're surrounded by all sorts of other amusement elements. As you're flying through it, everything else just sort of blurs by you and it feels like you're going probably twice as fast as you actually are. You might escape the desert sun in here, but once you hop on Canyon Blaster, there's no way to stop things from heating up very fast. We were just going straight down. There was no angle, just straight down. When it rolls, the whole dome rocks. It's an exciting ride. When you go through the ramp, it's like you're going up, and it's you just you just keep going you up. You never it. think it's gonna stop, and it's you clicking. You hear the clicking, and you, you get scared for a second. And riding a roller coaster inside is a lot different from outside. It feels a lot faster. Things are flying by a lot quicker. This is Wendy's first time in Las Vegas. Let's take a ride with her on Canyon Blaster. I think this is the worst. First drop, a 45 degree 90 foot plummet directly into two 72 and 74 foot loops. There's one. There's two. Canyon Blaster throws you headlong toward the dome, but at the last second, rips you sideways into two killer corkscrews with a top speed of 50 miles an hour and a one minute 45 second ride time. Canyon Blaster will rock your world. Going through the loop, the scream, that's all I can do. Going into the cave, feel like you're gonna hit your head, smack a few walls. Candy Blaster was fun. Candy Blaster was mortifying. Millions of people from around the country and around the world 
flock to California's coasters and theme parks. And as the 21st century begins, the state's coaster mania only continues to grow more intense. I think California is the mecca for coasters because Californians love thrills. And the best place where you can have thrilling experiences is at the amusement park. A century and a half ago, California was in the middle of a gold rush. Today, we find California in the middle of a thrill rush. Doesn't get any better, baby. Just what is it about roller coasters that turns so many people on and leaves them running back for more? Not everyone can actually go out there and be a skydiver, but you can do that when you get on a coaster. You can get that feeling. Where else can you go and have it be OK to scream at the top of your lungs all day long? A coaster's one-two punch of terror and joy makes us feel alive. It's the same kind of adrenaline rush we yearn for when we look to the sky and dream of flying. California is a leader in aerospace technology. Here, some of the world's coolest aircraft are built, like the stealth fighter and bomber. But California is also home to an entirely new kind of flying machine. Stealth, the world's first flying roller coaster, blasting through the air at Paramount's Great America in Santa Clara, California, just 44 miles from San Francisco. On stealth, passengers lie face down, flying through the air with arms extended, rocketing through a coaster lover's idea of heaven. As you glide over 50 miles per hour through eight inversions, looping, twisting, it's an incredible experience. You feel like you're Superman. Stealth really represents, you know, the ultimate in innovation. Who would ever thought that we'd be laying down <laughs> riding roller coasters? I mean, you can only dream about it. The mind-boggling experience begins when passengers enter Stealth's unique flight vehicles. Guests are tilted onto their backs for the steep ascent up the lift hill, unable even to see where they are going. Now, let's experience the magic of Stealth for ourselves through the eyes of Derek Hanna. We're climbing up 115 feet in the air, and we're about to invert over on our sides into the flying position. Now, here in California, we have incredible roller coasters, but there's nothing like this in California. This is stealth, and we are now flying, heading over 50 miles per hour. Up into the air, free as a bird. We're currently heading into a 70-foot loop where we can wave at everyone else as we go through the ride. The flying sensation on stealth is unlike anything else out there. So you must come out and conquer stealth. Millennium Coasters is surely pushing the envelope when it comes to technology and innovation. For coaster fanatics of all ages, stealth delivers pure joy and an illusion more impressive than any magician's trick. You don't see the mechanism of the coaster in front of you, below you, behind you. It's just you and the ground. And it, it's just, it's amazing. It's really a technological advance. Best roller coaster ever I've ever been on. The first time when you first turn over and you're looking straight at the ground and then you just have that sensation of you're flying. It's awesome, unbelievable. Twisting, turning, face up, face down. It's a good ride. Not for the weak of heart, though. It's a rush. <laughs> Definitely a rush. <laughs> Building this high-tech metal beast was no walk in the theme park. It was the brainchild of the designers at Vekoma, a Dutch company famous for its cutting-edge coaster creations. But even Vekoma required some out-of-this-world assistance. The Center for Human Factors, the Dutch equivalent to NASA here in the United States, worked very closely with Vekoma and Paramount Parks in creating Stealth. 
the latest scientific research on the effects of speed and gravity forces on the human body were used to make sure the ride was not only thrilling, but safe. Keeping it safe is the job of James Denny, a lead ride mechanic who works on stealth. We're in the center of the loop, just about a little over 60 feet in the air. You can see we have a really good view up here. Every month we go through every inch of this track, uh, checking for cracks or deformities. I'm checking the running tube. These are your splice bolts here that connect the two pieces of track together. Steel coasters suffer less wear and tear than wooden coasters, so their track doesn't need to be replaced as often. And though every coaster has safety devices, Stealth sets a new standard in ensuring its passengers one of the safest rides possible. Here on Stealth, we have a lot more electronics on the train itself. And there's a lot of conditions that have to be met electronically before that train will leave the station. The engineering on these is definitely high tech. Stealth is so wired that it sometimes seems more like a NASA spaceship than a coaster. Welcome to the computer nerve center of the Stealth. We've got a computer, a couple computers here that control the functions of the ride. Uh, it takes inputs from hundreds of sensors that are on both the train and on the track. So if any disagreements between the computers arise, it would shut down the ride. Stealth offers a dramatic evolutionary leap in the ride experience. But while roller coaster technology has changed tremendously over the years, the wild screams of pleasure were just as intense on the very first primitive thrill rides hatched in the same land that would later give us Sputnik and Stalin. That all American thrill ride, the roller coaster, really had its beginnings nearly 400 years ago in Russia when an enterprising St. Petersburg showman discovered people would actually pay money to be terrified. He built wooden slide, covered them with ice, and would charge the people to go down the hill on small sleds. These very early and primitive coasters would become known as Russian mountains. These slides would be 70 feet tall, run a length of, say, 600 feet, and people would line up for hours to experience this thrill. The Russian ice slides were built to be thrilling. They weren't built to be safe. And uh, accidents were very common, and uh, if you fell off, too bad. The ice sleds may have coasted, but they didn't roll. It took an 18th century Russian empress to put the first roll in roller coasters. Catherine the Great decided to have wheels placed on sleds so that people could enjoy this new thrill at any time of the year. Thanks to Catherine the Great, coasters like the Flying Wonder Stealth have rolled right into the 21st century. It is one of the main attractions of Paramount's Great America, located in the heart of the country's microchip mecca, Silicon Valley. When it first opened here 25 years ago, it had only two coasters. Today, it boasts 10, more than any other park in Northern California. Its army of thrill machines includes Top Gun, a twisting terror of a ride that was inspired by the blockbuster movie. Top Gun opened as the West's first inverted coaster, and to this day is the region's longest inverted coaster with one of the best finales out there over a lake. Top Gun's unique water flyover isn't its only standout feature. Like stealth, it literally flips normal coaster riding on its head. Top Gun is our suspended jet coaster. It's actually an inverted coaster, which means the tracks are above you instead of below you, which is how coasters traditionally are built. And it was the first of its kind in the West, and it just does some amazing stunts. Thanks to the high-speed acrobatics of rides like Top Gun and Stealth, the screams of ecstasy from lifelong adrenaline addicts will only continue to grow louder. It's becoming a great time to be a coaster enthusiast. You can't keep up with all the different rides that are being in every year. They're called thrill rides, but to me, it's more the fun. If you can't have fun on a roller coaster, where can you have fun? It's the best high in the world. There's no denying that California is one big state. If it was a separate country, it would have the sixth largest economy in the world. California is also a roller coaster paradise with more coasters than any other place on earth. 
And it was here that the biggest name in theme parks was born. Disney. As the new century dawns, Disney continues to be the leader of the theme park pack. Just check out California Adventure in Anaheim, 26 miles from Los Angeles. It's the first new Disney park to be built in California in decades, and it pays homage to everything that's special about one of America's greatest states. Disney's California Adventure was meant to really showcase kind of the dream quality, the imaginative quality, this dream state, if you will, of the state of California. Bring the best we have of the state to this place. The park features a dazzling array of fun-filled environments, like the Golden State and the Hollywood Pictures Backlot. The truly spectacular rides include the Sun Wheel, with its unique sliding gondolas, and the Grizzly River Run, which plummets passengers through whitewater rapids and roaring waterfalls. The raft ride takes you on an adventure that's similar to going into a national park and enjoying what that's all about. But for roller coaster enthusiasts, Paradise Pier is where it's at. It's a tribute to the glorious seaside amusement parks that once dotted California's coasts, but are now almost extinct. What we wanted to do was actually bring that spirit back, and thus we created Paradise Pier. It is a compression of real energy and excitement and fun, and it's fun for all ages. The backbone of every seaside amusement park was always a roller coaster, and Paradise Pier continues that tradition. Witness the electrifying California Screaming. We wanted to create what appeared to be like an old wooden roller coaster, but in fact, it's actually a coaster that has very 21st century technology. Zero to 55 miles an hour in four and a half seconds. Now that's excitement. How does California Screaming go so fast, so quick? Think magnets, big magnets. Using linear induction motors, or limbs, a series of electrically charged magnets create a magnetic field that rockets the coaster into infinity and beyond. We can take a train, which weighs approximately 20,000 pounds, has 24 of our guests on board, goes from a dead stop up to 55 miles an hour in four and a half seconds. It is very smooth, it's very reliable, and it makes a totally unique experience for launching guests on a roller coaster. California Screamin's quick blast off isn't its only high tech feature. The computer controlled ride system has to manage six separate passenger trains on the track at once and handle as many as 2,000 riders per hour. It all adds up to make California Screamin' one of the most complex roller coasters in the world. And though it may look like an old fashioned wooden thriller, this beauty is only skin deep. The coaster is actually a steel structure with steel rails on it, which allows it to go very fast. It's also very smooth. The steel rails allow for coaster acrobatics that are simply impossible to deliver with wood. One of the coolest parts of Disney's California Screaming is you take that loop right in front of Mickey's face. Disney rides are famous for delivering a complete sensory experience. So on California Screaming, even sound effects and music are used to get passengers pumping with adrenaline. It initially starts out as if you're listening to an old kind of band organ fanfare. But as soon as it starts, it goes into this hard surf guitar rock that actually matches emotionally and physically what you're going through on the ride. California Screamin' soars to heights of 120 feet and includes a perilous 108-foot drop down a harrowing 50-degree slope. Even for hardened coaster lovers, it packs quite a wallet. California Screamin' is the greatest. I mean, you come out of it, you're thrust into the loop, into the hills. The speed of it is awesome. One of the best coasters I've been on in Southern California. Actually, one of the best coasters I've been on in the U.S. I was completely scared because it went straight down. Now it's your turn to ride in the fun seat. Let's experience the thrill of California Screamin' along with coaster enthusiast Chris Murray. And away we go! Up the hill, over the top. Nice little float over the top of the hill, down to a dive, taking a turn around the Malibuer. Lovely view of the park. See the hotel over here. Nice view of the lake. 
coming around the turn, zipping around, and all the way up, up to the next limb powered hill. No chain lift on this ride. We get the electromagnets bolting us all the way up to the top. We got this cool soundtrack going in. And here we go over the top of the biggest section of the ride. Down to a nice dip. Diving under the track. Lovely head chopper. Around the perimeter turn. And now we're setting up for the nice big 360 degree loop around the Mickey ear. Here we go. Bunny hop. And here's where we get our float. Yeah. Up in the air. Out of the seat. And down to the final spiral helix. Down to the end of the ride. All right. Up and over. One more turn. And there we go. California streaming. At Disney's California Adventure. California Screamin' uses state-of-the-art technology to give us a glimpse into what roller coasters were like in the past. And coasters do have an incredible history. The first coasters appeared in America in the late 1800s at a beachfront spot that would also give birth to the hot dog, Coney Island. Coney Island was almost a nuclear test ground for new amusement rides. Entrepreneurs introduced new sometimes amazing, sometimes dangerous rides. One of these entrepreneurs is often referred to as the father of the roller coaster, LaMarcus Edna Thompson. His Gravity Pleasure Switchback Railway is often credited with being the first roller coaster built in an American amusement park. He built two towers, 45 feet high, 450 feet apart. Riders would climb to the top of one tower board a single 10 passenger vehicle, roll down and up and down the hill to the base of the other tower. The car was then switched to a second adjacent track so riders could roll back to their starting point. The switchback railway was an instant success and Thompson soon gambled that people were ready for another kind of roller coaster, what he called a scenic railway. One of the greatest of these would rise in the future coaster capital of the world, California. The Venice Scenic Railway was one of the first coasters to appear in the Golden State. The Venice Scenic Railway was a very elaborate roller coaster ride, in the dark mostly, through complex scenes with artificial rock work, lots of electric lights and scenes, including an Egyptian temple. The Venice Scenic Railway's man-made scenery and crude special effects would later influence the design of some modern coasters, like the legendary Matterhorn at Disneyland in California. It's a worldwide favorite and a coaster that has had a huge impact on all the modern steel coasters we enjoy today. It all came about because of one man who had a vision for a new kind of amusement park, Walt Disney. Walt had two daughters, and on Sundays, he would try and find places to take them. He used to take them to some of the kiddie lands around Southern California, and he was thinking, God, there's got to be something better, something that the adults and the kids can do together so that it's more of a family outing. Finally decided to build Disneyland. It would be more than an amusement park. It would be a theme park with theme setting and themed environments and rides and attractions that the whole family could share together. And then, in 1959, Disneyland introduced an entirely new species of roller coaster. It would forever revolutionize the thrill ride experience. Disney built the Matterhorn, the first roller coaster to use tubular steel rails. Walt wanted to build a coaster inside a mountain and needed tight radiuses and tight turns, and tubular steel offered that capability that the steel rails could be turned on tight radiuses and weave in and out of the mountain. So it didn't take up a lot of real estate. He could build the Matterhorn right in the middle of Disneyland. Today, the majority of coasters surf along on tubular steel rails. The steel construction permits turbocharged acrobatic moves that wooden rides just can't match. 
So the next time you rip through a killer coaster flip, remember the Matterhorn. Every modern steel looping coaster can trace its roots back to the Matterhorn. It is the grandfather of all modern roller coasters. But the Matterhorn isn't the only coaster at Disneyland that races along on tubular steel tracks. Just check out this ride. We're here at Disneyland, California. It's the wildest ride in our wilderness. Big back into the Old West, racing them in and out of mine shafts at runaway speeds. We can really tantalize guests by making them think they're closer to things than they really are. Of course, all our rides are completely safe and you can't touch anything, but try and convince somebody that when you're going tightly into a very tight cavern and then coming out into the sky and then diving down to a small hole in the ground. It's a great sequence of lights and darks and close and distant elements that really contribute to the overall effect of being in a thrill ride. The artificial scenery isn't just used to give you the feeling of a whisker-thin coaster shade. It goes to the essence of everything that is special about America's favorite theme park. Everything at Disneyland tries to fit into a real environment so that guests literally are willing to come with us and suspend their disbelief. So I think the most unique thing about Big Thunder, every curve and every dip feels like a natural phenomena rather than just a arbitrary bend in the track. And that's very hard to do. When the guests ride it, they really feel like they've gone back into the Wild West and experienced for a few minutes kind of a raucous, out of control time that doesn't really exist anymore. To ride Big Thunder is to literally step back into another world filled with rainbow caverns, bats, even waterfalls. And for serious coaster lovers, there's a special treat, a harrowing 480 degree horizontal helix in and out of the rugged rocky landscape. Though built in the 1970s, Big Thunder continues to top many people's all time favorites list. Big Thunder Mountain is just an awesome ride that gives you an awesome rush. You start going into some pretty heavy speeds and then you start getting more and more excited. It's definitely a classic ride. At first there was anticipation coming to the darkness. It was very exhilarating coming down the different slopes and the different falls and the turns. But the Old West wasn't about John. It was about action. So let's experience the power of thunder. Tubular steel thrillers like Big Thunder Mountain were just the beginning of what would become a bold new era of coaster innovation. California, it's home to some of the most spine tingling and gravity defying coasters on the planet. Look, is it a bird? A plane? No, it's Superman the Escape here at Six Flags Magic Mountain, Valencia, California. Whoa! Whoa! Superman is an extreme rush. Just launching out of the station, you're going you know, 40 miles an hour before you even leave the building. Superman is the most amazing ride ever. I'd say just plain fast. I like it. <laughs> this supersonic experience combines the legendary Man of Steel with an equally legendary Coaster of Steel, pushing the limits of speed technology. 
Superman the Escape is the world's first roller coaster to break the 100 mile per hour barrier. They use a series of linear synchronous motors to catapult a single 15 passenger vehicle from zero to 100 miles an hour within seven seconds. You're racing out of the station, up the 415 foot tower, and then only to free fall back. So it's an incredibly intense, fast ride, and it's 100 miles an hour, pure adrenaline. You're going so fast, so quickly, it goes like, wow! It's a feeling unlike any other thing I've ever experienced. You almost feel like you're a human catapult. Superman the Escape is the tallest roller coaster in the world and one of the fastest. Passengers get high, 415 feet worth of high, experiencing the most extended period of negative gravity or weightlessness on any roller coaster. It feels like your stomach's gonna come out of your ears. <laughs> At the top of the tower, you experience six seconds of weightlessness. It's zero G, so your body is floating up a little bit out of your seat as if you're in the space shuttle. Coaster buffs call this sensation airtime. And for many, it is the holy grail of thrill rides. Wow! Wow! Look, we're weightless, me and my poster riding banana, <laughs> This 1,315 foot long L-shaped superstructure has dramatically changed the skyline of Six Flags Magic Mountain. But is this odd looking contraption really a roller coaster? Most people think of a roller coaster as one which is a continuous circuit. Superman the Escape is a shuttle coaster, one which goes forwards and then backwards. With technological wonders like Superman the Escape pushing the boundaries of the ride experience, it's easy to assume that coasters have never been more terrifying. But the beach isn't the only place where you can take a gravity-powered ride in California. Fix your eyes on Riddler's Revenge at Six Flags Magic Mountain in Southern California. It's a roller coaster where you actually ride standing up hurtling over a radically twisting steel web that's as treacherous as any gnarly ocean wave. Can revenge really be fun? Just ask coaster enthusiast Jody Malone. We're on Riddler's Revenge, the tallest, fastest stand-up coaster in the world. You want revenge? We got the ultimate revenge! Riddler's reaches speeds of 65 miles per hour and soars as high as 158 feet into the air. But what's so different about standing up on a roller coaster? Only those who've done it can tell the tale. Riddler's Revenge is the most fun you can have standing up in the entire world. You feel more vulnerable, it gives you that illusion, so that makes it more fun. It's kind of almost a neat, defiant, flying in the face of the forces of nature kind of thing. I think you like feel it more when you stand than when you sit, and it just feels faster with all the wind rushing towards you. It's kind of freaky because you're like, because uh, uh. you think you're going to fall out because you're standing up instead of sitting down. It was sensational, once in a lifetime event. You're actually very free to rotate your head around and be able to take in the environment. Your peripheral vision actually works great. So even if you're looking forward into a loop or diving out, your brain is still seeing this picture out here of the world kind of spinning on its side. And it's an amazing feeling to be able to do that. And everyone has their special theories on why standing up is the only way to fly. The center line of your heart is elevated, so the blood flowing around your heart flows in a different way. The neat part is that you get a rush from it. You have a platform to stand on, but as you go around the curves, if you relax, your legs sort of swing and you really feel like you're suspended. It's incredibly cool. You get to stand up the whole time and you get all lightheaded afterwards. <laughs> Riddler's exacts a fiendish kind of revenge on its victims, rocketing them through six hair-raising inversions, a 360-degree vertical loop, a 360-degree oblique loop, two over-the-top diving loops, and two 150-foot-long barrel rolls. 
No wonder people get off the ride feeling just a little different. You literally feel like you're you're not going to come down. I mean, you're in the middle of this loop, and you're like, where's this thing going to end? You kind of forget where you are. You look into the next loop and the next loop, and they keep coming. I think I might have had an out-of-body experience. Yeah. <laughs> Does Riddler's Revenge really propel you into new dimensions of stand-up terror? You can be the judge, because it's your turn to ride the Riddler through the eyes of Jody Malone. <laughs> Standing and screaming on Riddler's Revenge is just one example of the breathtaking variety of thrills that today's coasters offer. Another very different kind of thrill ride can be found up in Northern California. Here, the magic ingredient isn't metal or wood, it's garlic. In Gilroy, California, a town for its garlic crop, one of the world's more unusual roller coasters is flying down the track, the Quicksilver Express. It's located at Bonfante Gardens, a theme park unlike any other on the planet. Bonfante Gardens is the first of a new generation of theme parks. It's a horticulturally based theme park. Bonfante Gardens is probably the most gorgeous theme park in the entire world. It does a wonderful job of integrating the beautiful gardens with the thrill rides. I mean, it has something for everybody. The park has quickly become known for its collection of rare flora and fauna, like the circus trees. Several trees grown together to form startling, almost alien-looking shapes. But for thrill lovers, the most exciting aspect of all the trees is how they are combined with the Quicksilver Express. We want people to not only feel the thrill of the ride, but have it enhanced by how close it might travel into a grove of trees so that you really feel the landscape is a part of the experience and a part of the ride. your breath away. I mean, it's a lot of fun. It was really, really fast, and I think it was one of the best rides in the park. Whether it's darting through the trees on the Quicksilver Express or standing and screaming on Riddler's Revenge, today's coasters offer an astounding variety of high-speed fun. And it seems they will only continue to get more spectacular, more unusual, and more intense. I really think there are no boundaries for roller coaster development in the future. There's probably going to be more focus on the ride experience as opposed to the rides getting faster and taller. The technology is here today to build a coaster of any size, any speed, any height. As far as I'm concerned, they could fly me to the moon 
and drop me back to earth. People love the thrill of riding coasters, and I think they'll continue to enjoy that thrill for years to come. No one really knows what brain-rattling, ecstasy-inducing scream machines the future will bring. We do know that whatever they look like, America's love affair with coasters will only continue to grow. Thank you. 